Kennedy Space Center is a place that I've always been super curious about, but we've never really had the time to visit. In today's adventure, we visit Kennedy Space Center for the very first time. The question is, if you've never been before, should you make time for a visit? Let's find out what a day at Kennedy Space Center is really like. Here we go. Good morning from the parking lot of the Kennedy Space Center. Um, it took about an hour and a half to get here from our Airbnb in Davenport. We're about to go in and check out uh, the Kennedy Space Center. This has been a really exciting dream of mine. I'm really excited to be here and can't wait to share it with you. For all of the planners out there, I want you to know that this one will take some effort, but it's worth it to make sure that you don't miss anything that your family really wants to experience. There's so much to do here that I knew we could not possibly do it all in one day. Luckily, the Kennedy Space Center provides itineraries for us to follow. They even have split it out for families with children under 10 and those with children over 10. In order to purchase your ticket for the Kennedy Space Center Visitor Complex, you can do that in a couple of ways. You can, of course, um, go online and purchase your tickets before you even leave home and print them um, directly at home from your home computer. Or you can wait until you get to the Kennedy Space Center and go to these little kiosks over here on the left and print out, purchase and print out your tickets. Now the prices that you see on screen here are as of today as I'm recording this video. Of course they are subject to change so please go ahead and make sure that you check the website before you head out so that you know if there have been any price changes and that way you can also take a look at the extra experiences that you might want to add on so that you know what to expect as a base price and what you might want to splurge on as an extra. Okay. John F. Kennedy is one of his favorite presidents. We are now going to go into the information center and see about getting our reservations for the bus tour. We will also consult our, oh, look, right here. We are discovering together. Here is where we will scan our QR code and we will get our reservations for the bus. Excellent. This is looking back towards the parking lot where we came in. We came in pretty early, so we were able to park in lot two. So before you go in to your far right, you will find the restrooms right outside of the astronaut training experience. That's on our list of things to do. Then over here is the will call window. Um, explore is where you actually go in. Right. As soon as you walk in, you will see an information kiosk where you can get the daily schedule and the visitor guide. So we are going to start off according to the touring guide in Heroes and Legends. So that's going to be our first stop. Heroes and Legends takes you on a journey through the earliest space missions and it's done through using actual artifacts that include the redstone rocket that's suspended overhead with the Sigma 7 capsule and a look at the Gemini 9 capsule. You'll also find the U.S. Astronaut Hall of Fame where each of the astronauts are remembered and honored and we can learn a little bit more about the lives of these space heroes through various displays. Okay. 
So I, as I understand it, it's a 20 minute ride to the Apollo Saturn Center. And this place is pretty cool so far. Oh look, there's stroller parking off to the left here. So you'll park it right over there. Any valuables, drinks or food, make sure you take out just in case. Okay. And then you can pick up another scooter at the 75 and Apollo so when you get dropped off. And then when you come back, you'll be dropped off at the Atlantis building and you can come through those white gates and pick up. So now we are sitting on the bus waiting to go to Apollo. We're really um, excited about this. Our tour starts at 1030. We made the tour reservations, again, using that QR code that we saw earlier in the video. You can do that or you can go into the information center and make your reservation for the bus. Okay, and outside there, before you get on the bus, they will take your photo. If you look down the road here to the right, you'll see there's a rocket down there. That is a Mercury Redstone rocket. And that's a real rocket too, by the way. And this rocket here is like the one that took our first American into space, Alan Shepard, on May 5th, 1961. Uh, the black part on the very top, that is a one-man crew capsule. And uh, believe me, there's not enough room in there for any more than just one guy. This is a tiny little rocket. Just to give you an idea how small this rocket is, if you look on the very top there, you'll see a red candle up there on the very top. This is what we call a launch abort system. And uh, how that works is uh, after the rocket's been launched, uh, that little red candle up there, uh, if there's any problem during the launch, that red candle can pull the capsule away from the rocket uh, to protect the astronaut from any ac accidents. Building in front of us. This is called the Vehicle Assembly Building. And this is the building that we use to put together the Apollo rockets, the space shuttles, and now our new space launch system before we take them out to the launch pad. Now this building here happens to be one of the largest buildings in the world. And I know it's hard to tell that because we really don't have anything around it really to scale it against like a city or anything. But there is a, an American flag on the side of that building. And that American flag up there is 21 stories tall. Each one of the stars on that flag are six feet from point to point. And the stripes on that flag, they are so wide that if I could, I could drive this bus up and down any one of those stripes. Now, if you've ever been to a basketball game, the blue section of the flag alone is the size of an NBA basketball court. Now, uh, this building is so big, we can put the old Yankee Stadium on the roof of this building and still have an acre left over for parking. It is so cavernous inside that if we could disassemble the Empire State Building, we could get three and a half Empire State Buildings inside there. It is the tallest one-story building in the world and the sixth largest one-story building by volume. Now, uh, I'd like to draw your attention to the gray stripes on the side of the building that are facing the road that we're driving on. Those are the tallest doors in the world. 456 feet tall takes about 45 minutes to open the door. And we could easily slide the Statue of Liberty on her base through one of those doors and still have over 150 feet to clear the top of the door. Now you folks are going to go see a Saturn V rocket here shortly. When the Saturn V rocket was coming out of one of those doors going out to the launch pad, it only had six feet to clear the top of those doors. Our new space launch system, well, it's going to be even bigger than that. Now, uh, I do have another giant thing I'd like to point out for you folks. We have a giant vehicle here about the size of a building. 
Those are called the crawler transporters. Now, if you look to the left of the crawler transporters, you'll see another giant structure up on top of some pillars. That is called a mobile launch platform. And the crawler transporters are designed to climb up underneath that giant platform. When you get off of the bus, there is an area where you can get a free stroller or wheelchair. And this is what the entrance looks like. When I was a kid, I used to dream about flying through space. Every week on TV, I'd watch my heroes be jumped into rocket ships and took to the stars. And I wanted to be like them. They had courage, imagination, and no problem ever stood in their way for long. For the comfort, safety, and viewing pleasure of all our guests, we ask that you refrain from flash photography for the duration of our presentation. If you must leave during the presentation, please exit through the doors on your right. Thank you. You are now in the final minutes before the launch of Apollo 8, right here where it actually happened. Mankind is about to leave his planet behind and journey to another. It is one of those rare moments when history is not being made, destiny is being embraced. And now for a look at this rocket. O M G. Oh my. Goodness, I can't even get it all in the frame. This is breathtaking. Okay, everybody. Just tremendous. I'm gonna walk alongside of the rocket here. And I've and it just keeps going. It just keeps going. And I'll walk back underneath it on the other side. Um, and we'll take a look at some of the exhibits in here, but I just want it to see how far this goes. And there's silence for me because I really don't know what to say here. This is just tremendous. There's another section of the rocket. I guess these two pieces would have attached to each other. And we'll just keep going here. Keep going with the rocket. And here is the third part of the rocket. And it looks like it would have attached here. Somehow. And then We'll continue on and we'll come to the front two sections of the rocket. And I am still walking. This is still going, this is still happening.
and it looks like we are finally at the end of this rocket and I'll just do a pan back in the other direction so that you can see that it just seems to keep going amazing simply amazing So at the end of the rocket, you will find a set of restrooms and there were a set of restrooms before you came in. And here is the Astro van. This is the van that the astronauts would have taken to get themselves to the launch pad. And as we learned, it was about a three and a half mile journey. I did want to let you know that there is a tribute here to Apollo 1. In case you are not aware, we unfortunately lost three astronauts back on January 27th, 1967, as they were training for a mission. We have the commanding pilot, Gus Grissom, the senior pilot, Ed White, and the pilot, Roger B. Chaffee. They were all unfortunately lost on this day, and out of respect for them and their families, I did not want to take you in here, but did want to make you aware that the tribute does exist we did walk through it and if you have a chance you should stop in and learn more about these courageous men okay the right stuff gift shop there are photos that you can take and you can order a digi pass which we did i will show you all of those photos that we took but this area has a gift shop it's called the right stuff and we are going to go inside and have a look at what they have available. So the little guy has found some freeze-dried ice cream. He wants to try that. We're getting some magnets. Uh, Paul is picking out some ornaments for the Christmas tree. That's something that we like to do. Ooh, look at this puzzle. As you know from previous videos, I am a puzzle fan. I don't know if I can put this one together. Gosh, that looks kind of dark. And look at Snoopy! Love Snoopy. How much is Snoopy? Snoopy is $34.99. All right, let's see what else they have here in the gift shop. So I think I need to have one of these. I need my space shirts because that's how I feel sometimes. Um, but I'm going to take a look and see what else they have here. They have housewares, mugs and things. There are all sorts of space mission toys here for you. And astronauts that are girls, yay. There are plushies of all sorts. Look at these. Oh, look, there are Legos. If you are into Legos, they have their own Lego sets here. They have a uh, dress up, astronaut helmets. They have space rockets. They have things for the babies. So, and marbles. Also have snacks over here. So as promised earlier, I did want to take a walk underneath this massive rocket. It is truly tremendous and a sight to behold. You can tell that I am geeking out. I was a little freaked out walking underneath it because it is so humongous. It was a little scary just to think about how large and how heavy this rocket must actually be. Right, so this is the command module. We're going to take a look in here. And again, I just can't imagine being in a capsule this small. Two to three men in a capsule this small. Here are all of the patches for the different missions that have flown. And Ed 
exiting the Right Stuff gift shop. Brings you right back to the bus area. Pretty much not too far from where we were dropped off. Thank you. Thank you. We will now return to the main visitor's complex. And we will, um, I guess, just park our loner stroller right here. Please park strollers here. And I have to tell you guys, the stroller was not comfortable. He would not sit in it. He preferred to walk, which is saying something because he does not prefer to walk. After the bus tour, we decided to take a break and have some lunch. We decided to eat at Orbit Cafe. I do have to apologize. I really thought that I took uh, pictures or video of our food, and apparently I did not. But I did put in here just what you can expect when you go in to order. You have to order at kiosks, and the kiosk will accept either cash or credit cards. If you put in cash, it will give you change. Just so that you know what we ordered and the prices at the time, we ordered um, the fried chicken tenders at $8.99 and apple juice at $3.99. There was a mushroom Swiss beef burger for $8.99 with a side salad for $3.99. I got the grilled fresh mozzarella on ciabatta for $8.99 with a side salad for $3.99. With the tax, our total for the three of us was $41.67. Not exactly inexpensive, and it's pretty much in line with what you would expect at a theme park, theme park food prices, and pretty much theme park food fare. Nothing special about any of the food, but did just want to give you a quick little background on the food you can eat inside the Orbit Cafe. If you try to eat outside of the Orbit Cafe, there are tables and chairs with umbrellas, but we found the birds to be very, very aggressive. Here we are at the Space Shuttle Atlantis. Not sure if this rocket out front is a replica or not, but we are going to go ahead and find out more about Atlantis. Over to the left of it is docking station. I believe here you can get some ice cream, space dots, and you can also get your photos. You just walked under the power behind a groundbreaking space transportation system. The full-size orange tank and white solid rocket boosters propel the space shuttle into orbit. Wow. Ginormous, guys. Here we go. Okay, and as soon as you enter the building on your left, there are restrooms. So this place has restrooms covered. You'll never feel like you can't find a restroom. And the movie is about to begin, so we're going to rush right on it. Hey, Betty. What, right now? Building 36? I didn't even know there was a building 36. Must be important. Everyone's here. We have propulsion, aerothermal, flight dynamics. Anyone know why we're here? For this. Goodness. 
The entrance to see the space shuttle Atlantis is really quite dramatic. The reveal is breathtaking. Um, that's a word that I use quite often throughout this video. It is awesome to be standing next to these super powerful machines that have flown into space. This exhibit is no different. Within this building, however, you will find over 60 interactive exhibits that celebrate the history of the NASA Space Shuttle program. There is plenty to see and do here. And once you go in, you will understand why it is on the list of things to do for those with children under 10. Plenty of exhibits, plenty of buttons to push. Second time around, they've switched positions. Here they go. And this is the next level down. If you recall, we went up a ramp. We um, opened up or came in where they opened up and revealed the spatial Atlantis. We came down a level and then we landed like a shuttle. Now we're gonna go down another level and I'm really excited to try the space launch. That's the next big thing. So Atlantis through, uh, flew 33 missions. Amazing. I guess it deserves to retire. Here we go, next level. Let's see. Really cool. Oh, look, how do astronauts go? <laughs> look, this is how they go. I guess you have to hold on, huh? Yeah. This is real. This is real. Looks like your average size, Lou. Where's that? Oh, are these pillows? I think those are pillows. Where's that? I don't know. That's how you lay your head at night. <laughs> Kinda. Uh, let's go find that. He went this way. To your right. See the arrows on the ground? Follow the arrows. Oh. Yep. Now, how do they eat? So this is where they do their food. Oh. at night so I, oh okay so this is what so they they zip themselves in a compartment that looks like this and that's how much space you have in there oh it's uh, kind of spacious it's more spacious than I thought a lot of velcro so you can pin your things down and they won't fly away but I wonder what your sense of time is like like there's no day there's no night so i wonder how you know when to go to sleep they probably tell you oh my gosh look at the bottom of atlantis so here's something that i do want to show you in order to get into the shuttle launch experience you do have to get one of these lockers and put your belongings in the locker they are free so no need to worry about um, them costing anything you just have to remember your locker number and code. And then you go up the walkway and the ramp here to the shuttle launch experience where there um, is a pre-show and your usual theme park lineup. Now the shuttle launch experience is billed as an eight and a half minute um, ascent into orbit. It's not as thrilling as I would have expected. 
We did not get to film anything beyond the locker area. We had to stow everything. The shuttle launch experience and the lockers are both included in the price of admission, so nothing extra to pay there. I would say that the experience was not as thrilling as I was hoping or expecting, especially considering that the folks at NASA helped Disney build Mission Space. It's nothing near as sophisticated as that, but if you are there, you have time to experience it, I would go ahead and give it a go and see what you think about it. So this is the area, as soon as you come out of the space shuttle launch experience, and has um, simulators that you can play with. So these are um, the guys are working on working with the robotic arm. Over here, where mom is standing, is docking the station. And over here, landing the orbiter. And as soon as you come out, they will have you take a look at the pictures that you took on your way in. So this is the little area. There's plenty of kiosks for you to try and work with. And plenty of things for the little ones to do. You know how they like to press buttons. Flip knobs. And mess with joysticks. Trying to land the orbiter. There are buttons, joysticks, etc. And even knobs above your head and they actually move so that you can actually play with those. All right, so this is the shuttle to the shuttle. Um, so this is the NASA shuttle that the astronauts are flying on the Atlantis a similar shuttle missions would have used to get to the launch pad. So it looks really similar to the one that we saw over in the other building with the um, Apollo. And they call it the Astrovan. So it was in use for 27 years. And it reminds me of an Airstream. I wonder if Airstream actually made this. This is really cool. Oh, yeah, look, it is Airstream. Very cool. And I believe they said it was a three mile journey over to the launch pad from where the crew got ready for their missions. And also learned on taking the simulator ride that once they got into the cockpit of the shuttle and they were placed um, in the shuttle, strapped in, ready to go, they could often sit there for hours waiting for the liftoff to actually happen. So this is one of the last times that they would be upright before they made it to the space station. There are a couple of other areas I want to explore. But this looks like, and I'm going to verify it on the front. Yep. One of the tubes that the astronauts would have traveled through within the space station. So we're just going to go around front. Yep. So it's a tunnel adapter truss assembly. So this is, um, placed inside the space shuttle on certain missions with an external airlock contingency to give astronauts access to the payload bay in case they need to close the doors manually. So this is interesting. This is like that little sim that the boys did upstairs where they crawl through. Guys, I'm geeking out. I still can't believe I am in the same room with the Atlantis space shuttle. It's just amazing. It's a bit of a dream come true. And right up there was that sim that I was talking about earlier that gave you the connected airlock experience that the boys climbed through. I am next going to go over here to Forever Remembered. And then we're going to go out and explore a few other things around 
Kennedy Space Center. Similar to the Apollo 1 tribute, the forever remembered tribute down here on the main floor pays tributes to the 14 brave astronauts who perished in both the Challenger and Columbia disasters. And I won't um, take you inside this exhibit either out of respect for them and their families, but they do have personal items here for most of the crew members. Uh, it's definitely um, a touching and moving tribute to everyone who was lost. If you have time on your visit here, I would definitely suggest that you spend some time in here and reflect on those brave crew members. Next up for us as we began to wind down our day was a little more shopping at the NASA Space Shop. This particular location is the largest store at the Kennedy Center Visitor Complex. So chances are if you're looking for something that you hadn't seen someplace else, you're likely to find it here, including merchandise from partners like SpaceX. It's two stories. It's large um, and there's plenty to have a look at here in this shop. It's supposed to fill up the rocket launcher. All right, next up, Planet Play. We're going to give this a perusal. We'll see what it's like to what Kennedy Space Center considers play. This should be fun. Here are the rules for Planet Play. Yep, it's designed for kids 3 to 12. And stroller parking is over this way. Stroller parking. Planet Play is a lot of fun. We all had a good time here, especially the little guy. As I mentioned at the top, this is for children who are aged 2 to 12. And there's a lot of different areas here. They have it broken out so that you can race over Mars. You'll see the planet play here. They can crawl in between the planets. They can climb on the planets. And parents, I see you. We get to relax while they play. We can enjoy coffee, wine, and beer. They have a lounge bar in the area as well. So you can sit down and relax while your kids are bouncing around. This was a lot of fun. And it's a good place for the kids to just burn off some steam. One of the last things left for us to do on the itinerary that was provided by the Kennedy Space Center was to visit the Journey to Mars exhibit. And this particular exhibit, you're supposed to discover what NASA's plans are for visiting deep space, including Mars, asteroids, and as we all know, they are looking to go back to the moon one more time. Similar to the other exhibits, it's supposed to have interactive games and simulators, and you actually get to explore replicas of the Mars rovers. However, by this point in the day, we had spent the entire day here. We had another hour and a half drive to go home, so we decided to end our day here with a character meet and greet. Uh, who knew that NASA had characters? Um, but we took a photo with an astronaut. If you've never been to Kennedy Space Center before, should you make time for a visit? The answer absolutely is yes. We enjoyed this visit so much that I'm going to put another one into rotation as soon as I can, especially since they've recently opened up a new exhibit called Gateway, where they explore the latest space technology built by NASA and their partners. I'm also very interested in the astronaut training experience. It's a four to five hour experience where you get to train as if you're going to Mars. It's open to individuals, groups, and children 10 and up so long as they are accompanied by an adult. There is so much to see and do at Kennedy Space Center. You could not possibly do it all in one day. It is very much worth time away from the major theme parks. Want to know what else is worth some time away from the major theme parks? Go watch this video on Disney's Winter Summerland Mini Golf. 
Remember to like, share, subscribe, turn on the notification bell so that you know when the next adventure begins. Thank you so much for watching and no matter where your next adventure takes you, we hope that you enjoy the journey. Bye now. Thank you.